Limited in Montreal. He joined uh, in 1985 Ecole Polytechnique de Montreal, where he is Professor of Electrical Engineering. In 1994, 2004, 2012, and 2018, he was on sabbatical leave, respectively, with LSSC NRS uh, in France, Ecole Centrale de Paris, University of Rome, Tor Vergata, and National Technical University of Athens. His interest in statistical mechanics inspired approaches to the analysis and control of large-scale systems has led him to contributions in the area of aggregate electric load modeling and to the early developments of the theory of minfield games. His current research interests are in col uh, collective decentralized decision-making schemes and the development of minfield based control algorithms in the area of smart grids. From June 2005 to uh, to June 2011, he headed uh, Gerard, the group for research on decision analysis. He is past associate editor of IEEE Transaction on Automatic Control and International Transactions on Operation Research. He was elected fellow of IEEE in 2022. So again, for the online audience, please be on mute. And if you have any questions, either you type in the chat box or uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, over to you, Professor Rola. The wallet. Okay, and, and you hear me? Okay, great. Well, very very happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Parima uh, uh, and well. So uh, this is uh, this is work uh, in in the area actually of mean field games, and um, it relates to uh, discrete choice problems. So, but that are carried out in a collective environment. So I'll uh, I'll try to uh, to give some examples. It's, it's joint work with. Uh, this was, uh, Rabi was my PhD student. We co-directed him with Jérôme Reni. Uh, he works for Amazon now. And so uh, what I'll try to cover is uh, motivate uh, the, the problem, this collective discrete choice problem. Uh, we'll study two versions of it. One where the only source of randomness is the initial conditions of the it's a, it's a multi-agent decision problem. So the initial conditions are random. This is the so-called deterministic case. There's no noise in the trajectories. In the next one, the next version of the problem, we have noisy trajectories. And then we'll, we'll see that the, the solutions are can be quite different. Uh, we look at, uh, we, we'll cite some extensions and then uh, draw some conclusions. So, Actually, discrete choice uh, theory has a long, uh, a long history in the static case. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a uh, Nobel Prize uh, that was allocated to, uh, associated with that research. And it is essentially how statistical uh, data often create an almost uh, deterministic behavior in terms of people's choices uh, in uh, so discrete choices are things like uh, what uh, what school am I going to join? Uh, am I going to work using the subway, or am I going to work using uh, using taxis every day, or do I walk or bicycle? Uh, so all of these decisions are often taken in an environment where others are watching you and others are have made choices, and you feel a certain pressure to do that. And so some of the some of the no, notable uh, events that that indicate that kind of social pressure, for example, the Harvard Gazette uh, reported uh, in two thousand a democratic 
Democratic U.S. House candidate, Julie Hammers, in, in 2009, uh, was one of the candidates, but she was not really popular. And in the past, other, other candidates had been elected. But then uh, some kind of uh, uh, coffee invitation was organized and they were, uh, Julie Hamas was asked to, to make a speech and suddenly her supporters started going around uh, asking people to uh, take out their checkbooks and support that candidate. And many people who weren't too convinced felt the pressure, the social pressure to do so. And uh, Julie uh, was a candidate and failed. So this is a situation where you're not comfortable with your choice, but you're conforming to the social pressure. Uh, another example uh, about acquiring at the time, now, now it's taken for granted that we all have computers at home, but early on, uh, uh, it, it was very difficult to sell the idea that, that uh, homes, individuals should buy computer, you know, uh, PCs at home and so on. So these are uh, these are statistics that were reported on uh, on something like two two hundred and eight US US cities uh, with the sales of uh, of computers in nineteen ninety seven pre nineteen ninety seven versus the acquisition of new computers past nineteen ninety seven and. Oh yeah, uh, Gooseby. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, so so you uh, you can see that the the larger the fraction of existing uh, acquisitions, the larger the new acquisition. So the imitation factor is is there. So social pressure uh, works. So again, this uh, this question of collective choice problems. Uh, the discrete choice uh, theory was, was was applied, for example, to find out whether uh, a metro should be should be uh, built uh, in some place. Would there be users for that metro, etc.? On an individual basis, uh, it can be, you know, what kind of uh, 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 transportation means will I use to come to university? If everyone around me in my department is using bicycles and I come with a with a big SUV, certainly they're going to look at me. I'm going to feel a certain uh, backlash from the from the group. So, how how to model uh, this sort of tension between individual choices and collective choices is a bit uh, our uh, our objective here. Now the applications, uh, one, one possible application is if, if there's robotic exploration with, with micro robots in, a, in an unknown terrain, uh, you want to, uh, to be able to, uh, we, we'd like to come up with decentralized decision schemes for these robots to gather in certain different places which are possible exploration points. We want to have a sufficient number of robots in each in each one of these points. At the same time, uh, we don't want to, we, we don't want that all the robots go to the same place. So there are discrete choices, but then there's the idea that we want the robots to remain in small groups. Uh, another sort of stylized application is uh, elections. So you can think in elections that uh, the destinations of, of uh, decision agents, which are the the, the people, uh, the voters, uh, are the candidates that they end up choosing. So there's a finite time before they can uh, they can uh, declare their choice. But along along the way, uh, if you think of uh, opinion dynamics as being a mechanical model, uh, there's a uh, there's the influence of the major the majority uh, uh, opinion which is acting on you. You may be on a different spectrum, but you get influenced by what the majority is doing. So there's, there's an effort to change your opinion, uh, but there's, there's also a discomfort if you are in a place where everyone is voting differently from you. So these are, these are uh, sort of uh, motivations for, for this model. Of course, originally I, uh, 
uh, I was I was I was really inspired by bees actually uh, how they go about choosing their uh, their nesting uh, their their new beehives. Uh, it's it's a whole phenomena, we, and and it's sort of a uh, uh, democracy happening in real time. They send they send uh, 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 individual bees to different spots. The bees come back, and their dance is a mark of their enthusiasm. And so they try to uh, encourage other bees to go to the same place. Eventually, if twenty, I, I think the number is twenty percent. Of, of of the group uh, favors one one choice then then they all go so it was one way of trying to mimic uh, that sort of uh, uh, decision making which is happening in the uh, in 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 real uh, uh, in real life oh okay Okay. Well, my my university also has a B on the, for work, you know, workers, engineering workers. But anyway, so uh, so so here is the picture. You have a comparing the costs. But now, uh, how do we compute the fixed point? Well, we, as, as usual, as we've said, we start with a, uh, with a trajectory we, and we generate, we generate for an individual, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, we, we generate uh, the partition. The individual falls in the D, in the J's partition. So it will go to the, uh, essentially to the, uh, to uh, it will use the control law associated with this particular partition. Then eventually we we are going to take the expectation of the behavior of the average behavior, and that gives us the uh, uh, the the operator that we need to solve to come up with a 
fixed point. Now, uh, the initial uh, problem is one of finding a continuous function, uh, a fixed point on a, on, a, on a continuous function space. That's a, that's a hard problem. But uh, it turns out if we, if we write the, uh, the maximum principle for an individual in this operation, uh, it, it, it has this form. So this is a state equation, a co-state equation here. X hat is the, uh, is the guess that I made for the mean trajectory. Uh, the initial condition is that of the position of the initial agent, and the boundary condition uh, depends on uh, where the agents fall uh, inside uh, inside its uh, uh, its uh, its domain. And so, if we average uh, if we average these behaviors, uh, we if we average these behaviors, we come up with. Uh, for the fixed point, when I average the x hat, when uh, sorry, when I average the the optimal trajectories of of individuals when they do their optimal tracking problem, if I average those over over the set of agents, that should give me back the same uh, trajectory that I uh, that I guessed. And so when we do that, uh, we get this system of equation which describes the uh, evolution of any fixed point with a boundary condition which is interestingly enough uh, uh, here you get when you average over all agents you get the mean destination position that is the fraction that goes to destination j uh, multiplied by the coordinate of of that agent and added up, uh, added up over uh, average over all agents. So when you look at this, uh, at this, at these equations, they are essentially um, uh, the they correspond to the maximum principal equation for a very simple uh, uh, optimal control problem, deterministic optimal control problem, which is this one. Okay, minimizing uh, this energy function with these equations, uh, with the uh, penalty at the end, uh, the penalty versus the mean uh, final destination, okay? And, um, and so uh, this allows us to claim that any valid candidate for a fixed point strategy has to be the solution of one of these optimal control problems uh, for a given choice of uh, the vector lambda and the simplex, probability simplex. So by fixing these lambdas, that gives you a candidate, a valid candidate. But any other trajectory that does not emerge as the solution of this optimal control problem for a given set of lambdas is not, cannot be a fixed point. So it becomes a necessary condition. And so this is what that last uh, result says. Uh, so you pick a set of lambdas, uh, a, a vector. This vector of lambdas, you solve the optimal control problem. It gives you a mean trajectory. This mean trajectory gives you a partition, uh, a partition in the space. And then you look at the probability mass of these partitions, and they have to be exactly the probabilities that you had started out with, the guess that you had started out with. So now we have a fixed point uh, instead of, of an infinite uh, dimensional space, we have a fixed point on a finite dimensional space. And it turns out uh, we can use Brouwer's fixed point, essentially, if there's enough con continuity uh, to be able to, to show existence of at least one fixed point. So this is what this theorem says. It says there's, you can work with a finite, uh, uh, fix, uh, the search on a finite dimensional space for your fixed point. Uh, there is at least uh, one uh, fixed point. And finally, uh, the optimal, the, the profile that's based on an infinite population uh, is, uh, is an epsilon Nash for the finite uh, 
for the finite population. This is what the theorem states. Uh, and and uh, so this is the uh, this is the idea of how the numerical algorithm would would work. And uh, eventually, uh, these are these are simulations. Uh, what you just saw the so there are three uh, three destinations and a population. Uh, green chooses green, blue chooses blue. There's no social effect. Now we are going to increase the social effect and look at the consequence. So if we if it works, <laughs> that's the problem. It doesn't look like it's working. Oh, okay. Okay. So why did it skip? Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. What what you just saw is essentially a part of the the agents that were going to the uh, middle destination start going to the right. Let's look at one more simulation. That's for a very strong uh, social effect. Q is the marker of social effect. Now everybody is going to this one destination. So by increasing the social pressure, you can see more and more agents are lining up with the majority opinion. How about the stochastic case? Okay, now the stochastic case, uh, it's the same cost function, but now we have uh, a noise that enters uh, uh, a Brownian motion that enters each each one of those trajectories. So here we don't have a standard solution. Had this been had this been a classical uh, quadratic term, not a min term. And by the way, I'm illustrating the case of two destinations for simplicity. Had this been a standard quadratic term, uh, this is the uh, hamilton jacobi bellman equation. It would have have it would have had a quadratic solution, and we would have a linear control, as we all know, uh, in as as an optimal feedback. But the problem is you have that uh, uh, PDE, but now with a boundary condition that precludes uh, a quadratic solution. Now it turns out. Luckily, at least in the scalar case, and unfortunately, it's hard to generalize, there's a uh, Hopf-Cole transformation that allows you to linearize this, uh, uh, this nonlinear PDE and allows you ultimately to express uh, the solution analytically. And uh, it turns out the uh, cost, uh, the optimum, the value function, the value function, uh, turns out to be uh, this uh, sort of uh, convex uh, uh, combination function. This is the V1 and V2 are the uh, optimal, uh, are the value functions you would get if you had a control dedicated to destination one, V2, a control destination de dedicated to destination okay. two. But now uh, they appear in this uh, in this form, and the combination here C is the midpoint of the two destination the segment formed by the two destinations. So this is the probability of uh, reaching essentially closer, being closer to destination one, uh, given that you are at position X at time little t. The, the, the probability of hitting uh, a, a position which is closer to, uh, to the first destination if you apply the policy which is dedicated to the first destination. This second probability is that of uh, hitting closer by time capital T if you are at position X at time T. Uh, hit, hitting closer the second destination by time uh, capital T. So, so you get, of course, if this is a zero, let's say, okay, this would be one. And you can see here that uh, this function reduces to V1, okay? The special case. Um, so, so you can write uh, this essentially. And um, what else can we say? The, Optimal control policy, uh, 
uh, turns out to be nonlinear in this case. Uh, it turns out to be a uh, convex combination of the optimal control policy dedicated to each one of the destinations. So this would be a linear policy by itself, each one of those. There's one dedicated to destination one, one dedicated to destination two. But what the agent has to do is a destin a pick a destination which is uh, which is a weighted uh, a weighted sum of the two, and the weights depend on uh, uh, some costs, and the costs are here. You have uh, uh, the J index appearing, so V J tilt tilde is V V J T X, which is the dedicated cost for that destination J minus a term here, which is actually the log of a probability. So that's a positive cost. And the probability is the probability of your uh, choice, the choice of destination associated with J. Uh, uh, this, this choice would result in a final uh, position, which is closer to, uh, to, to that destination. Remember, it's a stochastic trajectory given that you start at position X. So this means the agent is actually constantly reconsidering its, uh, it's, it's, it's the agent is hedging uh, its, uh, its chances of hitting, uh, uh, hitting one. So these are sort of uh, diagrams that, uh, uh, that try to explain visually uh, what's going on, okay? So at any time, T position X, uh, you, you are, uh, you are considering what would happen if I use the policy that takes me to one, what would happen if I use the policy that takes me to two, and uh, what are the probability of, of reaching uh, one before the other. And, uh, and essentially, the uh, control policy is trying to, uh, to minimize uh, both the cost and the risk of choosing the wrong destination, making the wrong choice. Okay, I, I won't uh, uh, try to explain further. I think I, I did. Uh, so uh, so this, this is actually what corresponds to a Gibbs uh, distribution, okay? So more mass to the less costly and risky choice. So how do we go about computing the fixed point? This situation here is more complicated. Uh, you have to think that uh, each uh, X bar is uh, generating a uh, is generating a uh, a particular uh, structure of optimal uh, of optimal control. Okay, so the controls the optimal controls that you get the U the U that I was referring to here, this one, uh, depends really on the choice of, of, uh, of X bar, okay? And so uh, what we need to, to solve here, if this represents the, the dynamics under this complicated control, uh, which depends on X bar, uh, what we need to solve here uh, we, we need to make sure that if we pick an X bar here, when we take the expectation of X star over all agents over time, that we reproduce the X bar of T that we have chosen. And so this is this is the McKean Vlasov equation. Essentially, it's uh, you you are uh, you have to find the X bar such that under that x bar, the control will will uh, um, uh, the law of uh, the, this 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 is related to the law of the process. So so you want to have a fixed point on the law of the process under uh, the particular x bar you've chosen. Okay, and uh, so we can we can show at least we can show that at least uh, uh, one solution exists. We can show, in fact, that again, as as we had it earlier, uh, 
uh, we can work with a finite uh, dimensional operator as in the deterministic case. So why is that? Uh, again, if we take the set of continuous functions, which are where, where normally we are looking for our fixed point X bar, uh, and we write the stochastic maximum principle for each one of the uh, of the agents. This is the uh, state and co-state equation you get, and you can see here is the cost, uh, the value function uh, appearing here, and the initial condition uh, depends on uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, which which uh, destination you are uh, you have landed at at time at time capital T. So the square. So you look at the Voronoi diagram essentially at time t uh, uh, of of your trajectory, of your particular trajectory. Now this is for one individual, but when we take expectations to compute x bar, when we're going to take expectation, this term disappears. This term disappears. So we get this equation, which looks very much like the equation we had in the deterministic case, uh, the uh, uh, co-state boundary condition is again related to a uh, to a mean uh, a mean position with some remember we've taken two de two destinations only but this generalizes uh, so the lambda is probability of going to destination one one minus lambda destination uh, two and again we recognize that this is what you would get from uh, a deterministic, in fact, uh, optimal uh, control problem with these, with these, uh, with this form, with these dynamics, and the initial condition uh, uh, being uh, uh, the mean of the initial mean of the system. So again, not any trajectory will do. It will. It has to be the solution to uh, an optimal control problem of this form for a specific, for a particular choice of lambda. So the point now is to find a lambda which results into a fixed point once it's implemented. So uh, so the, you, you compute that operator and you want lambda equals f of lambda. Uh, that, that, uh, and existence is again through uh, Brouwer's fixed point, uh, and we can also show that the uh, the strategy based on the infinite population, when applied to the finite population, if n is large enough, will result in an epsilon Nash equilibrium of order one of square, square root n, essentially. So, the, by but the uh, the computations of the I, uh, am I am I running late? It looks like. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, so the 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 computations are the numerical computations are more complex here. Uh, essentially, uh, you you have to start with uh, uh, you you have to start with a lambda. Actually, I I have to. Uh, find my way through this again. So so you have to start with, with a guess. Uh, we uh, because it's a two two destination problem, we we have worked with uh, with a bisection method essentially. So you start with the midpoint and then you move left right by increasing lambda or decreasing lambda. And uh, you you compute the uh, uh, once once you have the once you have the lambda, you solve the optimal control problem, uh, the deterministic optimal control problem. It gives you uh, this deterministic optimal control problem. It's, it's going to give you a, a candidate X bar. You use this candidate X bar to, to compute the optimal, uh, the optimal policy. Uh, given the optimal policy, uh, you uh, you run a Fokker-Planck equation to produce the to anticipate the future probability, and uh, and uh, and and you verify that this probability 
of attaining the destination one is exactly equal to lambda. If not, uh, if it's bigger or smaller, you move in, in the proper direction. So that's how uh, it's solved. And let's see if we're lucky enough. So uh, this is a simulation uh, where uh, in red, we indicate the uh, everything is scalar here, okay? But we're representing it in in uh, as 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 vectors. Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the policy dedicated to going destination one. Policy destin the dedicate destination two, and we represent the weights as vectors in in this simulation, the corresponding weights. So let's let's see uh, what this looks like. Uh, you can see for the moment the blue is dominating, then this guy goes red. Uh, this guy starts hesitating. Then eventually they will end up red and, and blue. Notice that because of the noise, you, you have a cloud against it around the destination. So this is uh, one simulation. Uh, well, let's see how the distribution evolves. So you start with the Gaussian initial condition, and then you can see uh, it splits. The two positions are minus 10 and plus 10. So uh, the two groups with different weights here, which are the areas under. Uh, the, mean, uh, the mean trajectory uh, looks uh, looks like a straight line. But uh, when we start uh, changing the uh, uh, the social effect, when we start changing the social effect, in the beginning uh, we we see the uh, a sort of expected behavior. Uh, uh, if you increase the social effect and one destination was was more favored than the other, you expect as you increase the social effect that everyone goes to the majority. So you get uh, you get uh, uh, this particular uh, the destination that was minimal in the beginning uh, goes to zero, and the other destination will go to one. But it turns out at a high enough. Uh, social pressure, it, and, and that's a phenomenon worth exploring further. At higher social pressure, uh, it seems uh, there's a potential because, uh, because if you think of the, uh, the effect of the noise, the noise can push you in one region or another region, and it seems like a large, sort of a large deviation effect. So it could, it could possibly, the noise could possibly act in a way which would eventually push everyone to uh, uh, to a destination which was 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 not the expected one. So that would be hundred percent that goes to the destination which was which was actually um, 